thank you and uh, good morning. And yeah, I will talk about Impossum. And um, yeah, my name is Oliver Tonova. Um, I'm working for OmniScale, which I also co-founded. And uh, we develop open source software. And uh, we are also the developer of MapProxy. And we offer OpenStreetMap services. We do this since 2009. We uh, um, offer custom WMS and tile services, for example, for the official German broadband atlas and uh, for other companies. Currently, we're working on Maps Omniscale.com, uh, which is a self-service self uh, website for WMS and tile services. And um, for all projects we're doing with uh, OpenStreetMap, uh, we're using Impossum. And today, I want to... Uh, yeah, show you what Impossum is and uh, why we developed it. So a bit about the history. Um, we started to use OSM in 2008 uh, when we built our first OpenStreetMap uh, uh, based demo for MapProxy. We, de we needed uh, um, maps to show what MapProxy can do. And uh, we started with OSM to PGSQL. We used the official OpenStreetMap Mapnik XML style uh, for, our old, for, our first, uh, for our first maps. But soon we wanted uh, our own maps with our own styling, etc. cetera. And um, yeah, I, I said that we used OSM to PGSQL, but we noticed that it was built for OpenStreetMap.org. It was not built to solve everyone's problem. And um, for us, uh, it was too slow for medium imports, for uh, uh, imports like uh, only for Germany or for Europe. Uh, it was not flexible enough for us. And uh, we found out that uh, there was still lots of room for improvement. So um, yeah, we had the idea to write our own tool to import OpenStreetMap data into a PostGIS database. And yeah, we thought, how hard could it be? Well, it was harder than we thought, but uh, we, uh, we solved it. We uh, got a first uh, working version in Possum 1, uh, which was closed source. But uh, we released a slightly modified version in 2011 as, uh, as open source. And uh, uh, that's in Possum 2. And uh, currently, we're working on in Possum 3. And, uh, uh, we'll talk about that uh, in a few minutes. So we had a few design goals for Impossum. Uh, it should be efficient. Uh, we wanted to uh, have custom database schemas, and it should be optimized for rendering. And uh, I will go into detail now. So it should be time-efficient import. We don't want to wait uh, days for, for a typical import, but only uh, hours. And um, even back then, a normal server had multiple cores. Today, you can't get a real server uh, with less than eight cores. So OSM to PGSQL back then was only single-threaded. Uh, um, today, some parts are uh, running in parallel, still not everything. Uh, with Impossum, uh, from the first day, uh, we made everything in, in parallel from parsing to geometry building to the actual importing into uh, PostGIS. Memory efficient. Um, if you did uh, imports of OpenStreetMap into PostGIS, you notice that it takes a lot of memory. And um, to give you an idea why it is so, um, this is a, um, a planet file looks like this. I uh, omitted some details, but you have a huge list of nodes with, uh, with an ID and with the coordinates. And currently we have uh, more than two billion nodes in a planet file. And after all the nodes in the planet file, you will find the ways. And um, the ways don't store any, um, uh, any coordinates, they only reference as nodes. And so if you want to build this rail segment, you need to find the uh, referenced nodes. And um, XML and PBF don't support random access. Um, so you have, you've got a problem there. And um, to solve that, you need a cache for the nodes. You need a cache um, where you store all node IDs and the coordinates. You can do that in memory, you can do that in a key value store or in a database. 
And this also applies to ways, because when you want to build a relation, you need to know um, how a way um, is built, and then again, how uh, the way is built from the nodes. And um, OSM2P GSQL has um, two modes. Now there's another one. Uh, it's a normal mode where it caches everything in memory. There's a slim mode where it caches the nodes in uh, PostgreSQL. And there's a new option, flat nodes. Uh, and um, it works similar like the normal mode, but uh, it's only suitable for uh, whole planet imports. So the normal mode caches all nodes in RAM. And for a current planet file, you need uh, 22 uh, gigabytes of RAM. It stores the coordinates in blocks of 65,000 nodes. And um, so empty blocks are not alloc allocated. That means if you have a small extract, then you don't need much memory. But as soon as you have a larger extract, where uh, most blocks will be filled with at least one node, then you need to allocate that block, and you will need uh, much more memory. So um, if you uh, want to import Europe, you still need the uh, uh, more than 20 gigabytes of RAM. Then there's a slim mode. It caches everything in PostgreSQL. It's, um, yeah, it's much slower than memory uh, or um, other modern key value stores. And so what we did with Impossum 2, uh, we built the cache not in memory and not on, uh, on PostgreSQL, but we used a key value store, in this case, Tokyo Cabinet. It's a C library. It's yeah, key value database, but not a server. Uh, so it's similar like SQ, SQLite. And we implemented some additional optimizations. Uh, we use compressions and delta encoding. And um, uh, in the end, it's, uh, it's quite efficient. It takes uh, 8 to 10 bytes per node, so you can uh, get um, uh, cache all nodes of Germany in about 2 gigabytes. And it's fast to, to write. So the whole parsing, you can parse and cache these nodes uh, with about a, yeah, a few hundred thousand nodes per second. Custom database schema, also a feature we wanted to have. Um, with OSM to PGSQL, you basically have three tables. Uh, one for points, one for lines, and one for polygons, and uh, also one uh, only for roads. And a polygon table looks like this. You have the ID, and then you have a column for, um, each, uh, for each tag, and then the geometry. Um, the problem is, when you want to render all forests in level five, six, or seven, and you have an import of Germany or Europe, then uh, the spatial index doesn't work because you actually want to render uh, all your extent. And uh, post PostgreSQL needs to do a table scan. It needs to check all, uh, uh, all rows and uh, only filter out the forest columns. And um, this can become uh, quite slow. So with Impossum, you can define uh, the database schema with a Python mapping file. And you can um, define which key values should be imported into uh, which table. And it looks like this. Uh, with this code snippet, you can create a drinks table. And uh, it will create points, point geometries. Um, for all nodes with the tag amenity pub or amenity bar. The uh, mapping is quite quite flexible. You can uh, use wildcards, um, say if you want to import all buildings, or in this case, all highways. You can add additional properties, or fields, how it's called in, in Possum. Uh, so in this case, we also want to store the name, uh, the tunnel bridge in one way, um, into the database, into the table. and. Um, it's uh, impossible also allows you to use filters and to use converters to, um, uh, in this example, um, store Boolean values into the database. So you can define a tunnel with yes, true, one, false, no, or zero, and uh, you can unify that. And that simplifies uh, the, the rendering process when you want to style the maps. And you can also do custom filtering. So you can write your own, uh, your own converters. And in this example, um, 
we have a, uh, a table with towers where we want to store the height in meters, and uh, we can write our own uh, uh, converter uh, to uh, convert uh, height in feet uh, to meters. And we had the goal to, to uh, make the import optimized for rendering, so we implemented generalization. What that means is we have, um, we have multiple copies of the same table with uh, simplified geometries. And um, in this case, we have the roads in three uh, generalizations. And um, when you render the uh, lower levels, uh, lower zoom levels, and you can use a simplified uh, geometries. Um, additional I.O. optimizations. Um, Normally, during an import, um, PostgreSQL writes the data as, um, as it gets added. So you typically, typically all geometries are across uh, the, the hard disk. What you actually want is that um, geometries from the same area are at the same area on the hard disk. Because when you run to uh, render a few hundred buildings, you don't want to search the whole uh, hard disk uh, for the buildings. You want to have them all in, in, a, uh, in a sequence. And you can do that with a PostgreSQL cluster function. It reorders the data on disk, and, you, um, and it orders uh, that based on an index. And you can do that um, based on the spatial index, but, with, uh, but it's even more efficient when you do that with a geohash index. And that's what uh, Possum can do. So. Um, uh, each, green in, uh, each green block contains all the data um, of that uh, geographic area in a, sequ a sequential order on the hard disk. We also support a limit to option. It's just, uh, this is interesting when you, uh, when you have smaller extracts. Uh, you can, uh, it's quite efficient and you can uh, actually load complete uh, boundaries of uh, whole countries and um, Impossum will clip the geometry at the exact boundary. So our design goals we had for Impossum, we wanted uh, the imports to be efficient. We did that with uh, an efficient cache. Uh, we did that also with, by, um, by supporting multi-CPU. Uh, uh, we wanted to have custom database schemers, and we did that with our own flexible uh, mapping configuration file. And we wanted to have optimizations for rendering. Um, we also did that with the custom database schema by um, having generalized tables and uh, by uh, adding clustering. So what's missing? Um, in Possum 2 does not support um, updating the database, so there's no diff support. And um, while it was, uh, while in Possum 2 is fast, um, there was still uh, um, yeah, room for improvements. Um, Impossum 2 itself is written in Python. Um, the most, uh, all CPU heavy stuff is already written in, in C. We use um, a lot of uh, C libraries like uh, GIRS, um, uh, the protobuf parser is uh, written in C, and um, yeah, but there were no low hanging fruits left to, to improve the performance more. So, for Impossum 3, we had the idea to write it from, uh, completely from scratch. Um, but we wanted to share uh, most of the architecture so that the rewrite process is uh, as smooth as possible. Uh, but we wanted to optimize uh, uh, all or most parts. And Impossum 3 is now implemented in Go. I don't want to advocate uh, Go here. It's uh, 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 we don't have time for that, but it's faster than Python. Uh, it's uh, quite easy to learn, easy to integrate with C, well, because we still need to use some C libraries like Geos for the geometry handling. We don't want to uh, reinvent the wheel here, and it's easy to uh, deploy. So a few things we changed with Impossum 3 is, um, one example is the nodes cache, and uh, as I said earlier, also the ways cache. Um, it's now based on hyperlevel DB. It's a bit faster than uh, Tokyo Cabinet. We did more low-level optimizations. Uh, we improved the delta encoding, and uh, we encode common tags as a single Unicode value. So this, uh, uh, this saves uh, a lot of memory. 
and uh, but the user don't uh, doesn't see that, so it's uh, only internal, and it's uh, it's quite fast. Um, we uh, need about eight bytes for a node, and um, it's quite fast to parse and cache the data. We can do uh, even on a notebook. You can do uh, millions of nodes per second. We optimize the uh, the actual import into PostgreSQL and into PostGIS. Uh, uh, and Possum3 now uses copy from. Um, it's a way to do bulk imports, and um, uh, yeah, it it uh, dramatically reduces the CPU usage of Postgres itself. And um, we also support schema names. It's uh, not related to the database schema, but it's um, uh, it's like a namespace where you can put all table names. And um, if you're using Impossum 2, uh, and now about the uh, uh, deploy production uh, table option, um, this is now uh, uh, less fragile than with Impossum 2. Uh, another big feature is uh, diff support. Impossum 3 does support uh, diffs, and um, it's um, yeah, handling this is not that difficult um, because if you just add new geometries, it's uh, basically the same as when you do the first import. Um, when you have an update, an update for a point, then it's also not that difficult because. Um, when uh, a pub location moves, um, um, well, then you can just update that point in the database. But when someone modifies the way geometry, when someone just moves one point of that way, um, then you will get that diff file where it only uh, says that the node was modified. But you don't have an idea uh, which way actually uh, was modified. So. You need an additional cache file uh, with a um, yeah, reverse index where you uh, store this node um, is, uh, is used by this way. And when a node uh, gets moved, you need to update this way. And uh, Impossible 3 does this during the import with the diff option. And then there's the uh, impossible diff command, which removes all deleted or modified elements, which then updates the cache and uh, the uh, reverse index, and then reinserts all modified and uh, created elements. It also handles uh, general, uh, um, uh, generalized tables. Um, the whole diff import is not performance optimized uh, yet, um, but actually it's fast enough. And um, we, this is uh, this is some data for about one month of importing uh, Europe X uh, Europe diffs and uh, minutely diffs, and most of them are imported in uh, in a few hundred milliseconds. And the worst case was uh, 20, 20 seconds. Uh, that can happen when when larger uh, geometries like boundary uh, like country boundaries change. The mapping, um, we change uh, the mapping to uh, to a JSON format because we don't have Python anymore. Um, but you can uh, convert most Impossum 2 mappings, if you already have uh, uh, some, to uh, an identical mapping for Impossum 3. What's not possible at the moment are custom filters. So the current status of Impossum 3, we are using it in production for more than nine months now. We're using it uh, with diff support for about three months. Um, we might uh, do some smaller changes for the mapping, and um, we still have no documentation, and that's basically the only blocker for, uh, for us to release an official 3.0 release. So the future... Um, we might uh, add H source uh, support in the near future. Uh, uh, maybe we want to uh, we want to support other databases. We are still unsure uh, how we um, um, uh, make the API for that. And in the future, we might support um, scripting of custom filters, maybe with Lua. And yeah, Impossum two. It's uh, now in maintenance mode. Uh, we still have customers that, that are using it, um, but at the moment we don't have any uh, large new features planned for it. So 
At the end, short summary, OSM to PGSQL. It works well for OpenStreetMap, but for us it didn't work that well because uh, we needed it to be more flexible. Uh, we wanted to um, implement uh, yeah, optimizations, especially for rendering, and we needed software that was faster, especially for mid-sized uh, mid extracts on, on yeah, slower hardware, on mid-sized hardware. So um, that's it. Thank you very much, and uh, I think we have time for questions. Okay, thanks a bunch, Oliver. We have time for a couple of questions. Please raise your hand, and I'll pass the mic. Uh, talking about uh, OSM2 PGSQL, in the meantime, you have a, I would say, signal to noise ratio of two, um, one on, uh, against two. Talking about the actual tables in use and the ones just uh, needed for updates. So, which is this ratio in uh, Imp Awesome? Um. Uh, you, you mean for 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 the updates or for the update tables against the actual tables you need for rendering or for using the database? Uh, it's a one to zero. No. You you don't have in um, in in, um, in PostGIS uh, in Possum doesn't store any data that's needed for um, for updates. Okay, so this is stored in a file system. It's uh, yeah, it's in the um, in, in the to uh, no, it's in the uh, hyper level DB. So it's um, it's uh, on, on the file system. You have um, yeah, it's similar to an SQLite database, and it's um, yeah. So, it's what's the size we are talking about for a whole planet? Um, for a whole planet, um, I can tell you the numbers. Well, for Europe, they're below 50 gigabytes. So, for a planet, it should be uh, below 100 uh, gigs. Sorry, 80. Yeah. About yeah, 18, at, okay, gigabytes. so that, that's that's much less than uh, yeah, because um, um, the the level DB um, is much more efficient at, at storing uh, at storing all this uh, uh, information we need for handling the diff updates. Okay. okay. Does it work on Windows? Um, it uh, it should should be uh, it should work, but um, no one tried to compile it. I think so. Um, it's um, um, Impossum Two um, uh, couldn't run on um, uh, on Windows because it used Tokyo Cabinet, and Tokyo Cabinet uh, does not work on uh, on Windows. Uh, but in theory, all all dependency should work on Windows now with uh, for for Impossum Three. But um, yeah, I'm not aware of anyone that, that tried to compile it on Windows. So. Okay, so if there are further questions. Uh, do you have any community contributors for Imposum or is it uh, completely omniscale developments? Um, most, most development work is uh, done by us. Uh, we have a few smaller contributions uh, from, from other developers. Um, there's a, a patch for uh, supporting uh, spatial light um, uh, for, to Impossum 3, uh, but, but I uh, quickly mentioned that we still need to define the API, how, how we want to handle that. Um, uh, so, yeah. But most work uh, of Impossum 3 and Impossum 2 was, was done by us. Yeah. Um, HStore is becoming very popular for people so that they can design the map styles after they've done all the importing. Can you speak, like, how does Imposum handle arbitrary tags? Um, it's, HStore is not supported yet, but um, yeah, maybe in a few weeks or months. So it's, uh, it's possible that it will be added in, in the near future. Okay, one last question. Left. No questions so far? Okay, Oliver, thanks a bunch for the talk and thanks. Yeah.